Last fall's special session resulted in substantial changes to the state's pension system. But the appetite for reform seems to have waned on the municipal pension side as lawmakers head into the heart of the session. This week, we sit down with two veteran union leaders for their take on the changes and what's ahead. The biggest problem in the last decade was the lousy rates of return. Bob Walsh, a 20-year veteran of the National Education Association of Rhode Island, representing about 12,000 active and retired teachers. There's been a couple of situations where some very serious errors were made. And George Nee, president of the local chapter of the AFL-CIO, a federation of unions representing nearly 60,000 public sector employees. In many ways, Walsh and Nee have become the public face of organized labor in Rhode Island. They have been in the thick of not only the most recent pension discussions at the General Assembly, but changes over the past two decades. And they've heard assurances in the past that adjustments will fix the system for the long run. One of the big pitches last fall was, if we fix this, we're fixing it once and for all. Right. Do you believe that? No. I think the intent is admirable. I don't that you can only say that based on what we know today. For example, we don't, we don't know what's going to happen to the world economy in the next four or five years that's going to impact the rate of return. This is it. We won't have to come back <laughs> and do that. Do you believe that? No. We've both been around long enough t that when political folks say, this is it, we're never going to have to do this again. Well, this is the fourth time I've heard this is it on the pension issue in the last now seven years. Walsh says he is confident the unions will prevail in a court challenge to last year's alterations spearheaded by General Treasurer Gina Raimondo and Governor Lincoln Chafee. The changes included increasing the retirement age, freezing cost of living adjustments, and implementing a hybrid 401k style retirement plan. Walsh's prediction? The courts will look to other states like Connecticut, which has similar pension problems, but has increased state contributions and refinanced some of the pension debt. We just made a significant tax cut on our highest wage earners. Four percentage point tax cut. We took, took the highest uh, income tax bracket down from 9.9% all the way to 5.9%. At the same time, we're crying poverty in the pension system. Don't Talk. you also get a little heat when, when the headline is uh, Walsh and potentially other uh, union people are saying, well, one of the key ways to do this is we need to, to tax people a little bit more? Well, it's Was an that a fair representation thing. of your um, Well, I think, that, I think one of the problems in Rhode Island is the property, over-reliance on property tax to fund public education. It takes, it starves our urban core communities. People are funny about their taxes. They can tell you to the penny what their property taxes went up. They've got much less idea what's coming out of their paycheck for state and federal income taxes. Um, and is that what you in, wanted to see it? Oh yeah, I, I think boost on the yeah. I think we. Tax? I think we. Yeah, I'm the. Uh, I'm definitely the Buffett tax, not the buffet tax category. Treasurer Romando warned local cities and towns they need to do their homework before launching into pension reform. And that has resonated this session on Smith Hill. What is your uh, prediction, thought about municipal pension reform going through this session? I, my guess at the moment is that it won't. And I think for two reasons. One is that I think people are pensioned out and, and don't want another fight uh, and don't want another, because there will be a big fight on Despite it. Despite the gravity of it. Despite the gravity, but I think secondly, I think that there's, well, there's another factor, and that is that there's a big, big difference between a statutory benefit and a benefit that's been achieved through collective bargaining. The General Assembly has always had the power uh, to to make the changes in the pension system. That's always been recognized by the unions. That's, that's whether they've had the political will to do it or not. It's right, another and, issue. and they they actually have. I mean, look at 2005, 9, and 10. They did exercise that political will. What is your assessment? of a municipal pension reform getting through this session. Do you think that's going to happen in some form or another? No, I don't think it's going to and happen. And why is that? I think the treasurer, Treasurer Armando, correctly pointed out there's a lot of homework that needs to be done. Uh, while I disagreed with the outcome, she gets full credit for doing her homework. I don't think there's been little or not, no, 
even since November, collective bargaining going on. I think there's a growing number of legislators who have figured out what I've told you earlier in our conversation. Those unions are going to win in court. So why pass another piece of legislation that's going to be subject to legal challenge and, and prolong a problem? Walsh admits that the economic and governmental dynamics are a lot different than they were just a few years ago. And he says even if the union prevails in court, changes have to be made. Especially since the past two years, the system has been paying out more than it is taking in. But those figures are very daunting. In if you believe what the pension, okay, it's going to be $300 million this year, $600 million, and then all of that, that it consumes such a huge chunk of both local and state budgets, then in the end, if you don't get a reasonable compromise or a solution, then that, that overshadows everything else. Yeah, you know, it could be. Yeah, so my, in fact, what I... You think your membership understands that also? I, I'd say a majority understand. I, mean, I absolutely have people say... Your obligation is to get every single penny back that they took away in not only this last pension change, but the prior two, which are still, you know, going through litigation in the court. And your response? And my response is that's probably not a realistic expectation based on the underlying numbers in the economy. Then there's the effect Central Falls declaring bankruptcy has had. Nee says that while the state isn't going to go bankrupt, it is a wake-up call for union workers in local communities. Has Central Falls been a sort of Damocles? Oh, I think I think it's been a very yeah, I, yeah. It's it's if, it's if this it's, can happen it, and we can reduce benefits yeah. under the bankruptcy, yeah. whether you agree with yeah. it or not, yeah. that does that get people's attention? Well, I think it probably much more on the local level than the state level. Although it certainly it it was a pretty dramatic and draconian. Uh, situation and it was something that people would have never thought could happen. I mean, here you are, one month getting five hundred dollars a month in your pension, and the next month you're getting two fifty. All one person made that decision, or was empowered to make that decision. I mean, I, I think it scared the hell out of people. If I was advising, um, you know, my union brethren in Providence, I'd say sit down at the table with the mayor and figure this out because in bankruptcy your rights are severely limited. Nee also says decisions made far away from the state house will affect the pension system going forward. We have a whole different world that investments are made in. I mean, you know, whoever thought five, six, seven years ago that what happens in Greece or Italy or Portugal or, you know, uh, will have such an impact on your pension fund because it's so, it's so much a part of the global economy now that it really does cause some concerns. At the state house, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.